Arrive at Eagle Heart Fellowship, 16650 East US 40 Highway, Independence, Missouri, 64055. Come join us on a Friday night in Independence, Missouri. Amen. Amen. Tonight's message is on dreams and visions. We're going to take some teaching notes from different notes that I have. We're going to piece this together. Because God's desire is that all of us experience Him hear his voice, and operate in understanding of dreams and visions. The last day saith God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see dreams. Your old men will see visions. Even on my men servants and maid servants in those days, I will pour out of my spirit, and you will prophesy. So dreams and visions enable you to prophesy. What is prophecy? To prophesy is simply this. It's not to prophesy. lie. It's to prophesy. It's to hear from God and communicate God's mind on the matter and His heart to someone else. It's not to lord over people. It's not to use power over people, but to be their servant and to come to them humbly and say, this is what I sense the Lord is saying about this matter. It's for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Joseph in the Old Testament was a dreamer, and as a dreamer, God enabled him to deliver two nations, Egypt and also his own brothers that sold him in to slavery for 30 pieces of silver or 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites. God desires to pour out His Spirit. God still speaks today. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The keynote verse that I like to quote is Job chapter 33, <laughs> verses 14, reading on. We're going to go ahead and uh, use a tool here for our screen. We're just going to pull something up. And we're going to go in here, and we're just going to pop into Job. Job has disappeared. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. You get kind of used to uh, opening the Bible and finding them that way. So when they're on a string, you're like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? So then we could just go like that. So here's what Job says. That's kind of strange. Okay. Job says, God does speak. Now one way, now another, though man may not understand it or perceive it. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, as they slumber on their beds, men, women, and children, then God may open their ears and seal their instructions to turn man from pride or to preserve his soul from going down to the pit of death or perishing by the sword. God does this oftentimes with man. Job 33, verses 14 through 18, rough translation. So God speaks to everybody in dreams and visions. People say, oh, God never speaks to me in a dream or a vision. I've never had a dream or a vision. Yet you hear them talking and they're like, oh, wow, I had this really crazy dream when I was this age. Right. And then it came to pass. It was like a deja vu. I wish I'd have heeded the right. morning. Well, God was speaking. God speaks to non-believers in dreams. He speaks to believers in dreams. And He'll speak to a Pharaoh who doesn't know God, who thinks he is God himself, and he lords over a people as a dictator, and God will visit him in dreams and visions. I fully believe that everybody in the Senate, everybody in Congress, everybody in the White House has been spoken to in the last several years in dreams and in visions. Wow. Whether they know God or whether they don't know God, God is trying to get them to understand him, and he's communicating with them in dreams and visions. Whether they heed that word or not, I do not know, but I know that God is no respecter of persons. It is important for him to be able to communicate his voice. The enemy doesn't mind communicating his voice through media, right. through television, through text messaging, through pictures, through violence, through... It goes on and on. Absolutely. 
He clearly speaks his message, and he does it supernaturally as well. People are hungry for the supernatural right now. I'm hungry for the supernatural, but it's got to be the supernatural of God. One of the reasons why our children are not in church today is we haven't had enough of the supernatural. And we have the X generation that God is raising up right now. They've got the X blessing on them. You see it in Genesis when, when God put the X blessing on Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob crossed his hands and he blessed them with the X blessing. I believe prophetically there's an application where we're coming into a time when the children beneath us are being raised up. They're the X generation. The enemies tried to X them out. But God's put them up for a blessing. They're incredible DNA infused signs and wonders children for the end days. They're out there. They're doing things like jumping off Bungee cords. There was a guy the other day that I saw on, on, on video on YouTube where he acted like he was asleep on a plane. He acted like somebody woke him up. He wasn't wearing a shirt. He got up. Somebody handed him a Red Bull. He grabbed it. He drank it down. And he jumped out of the plane with no parachute. That's right. And as he's flying through the air with no parachute, doing flips, having a good time, two of his friends come that have parachutes on and they clothe him with a parachute in midair while another one is video taping it and then he safely lands Crazy. on the ground. I don't know about you, but I think that guy's called to some serious things for the yeah. kingdom of God because he's fearless and he's not even going to gain an eternal benefit Absolutely. for that. There are children that are willing to give up their lives for what they believe and what they believe is not even the truth wow. as it deals with eternity. And so God is wanting to raise up our children for signs and wonders. And one of the things that God is pouring out even more today than he ever has before is simply dreams and visions so he can communicate his mind and his heart on the matter. Somebody would say, well, well David, if, if God wanted to speak, why wouldn't he just speak directly? Why does he speak in dreams and visions? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> God speaks in dreams and visions because He wants to grace us in the middle of the night when Facebook and Twitter and text messaging and all the other things that vie or contend for our attention are not around because we're knocked out because He has difficulty yeah. getting a hold of us yeah. during the day with all the clamor and all, all the things stuff. that right. are seeking oh. our attention. So those things are laid aside or laid. And during that time when deep sleep falls on men as they slumber in their bed, then God visits us with a dream or a vision of the night to give us instruction, correction, encouragement, a number of other things. And what happens is when we awake from the dream, if we'll simply write the vision, make it plain upon the tables, that he may run that readeth it, God will begin to give us interpretation. When we honor God by writing down what He speaks to us, God will honor us with giving us understanding on what it means. When we ignore God when He speaks to us, He will speak to us less. But He will speak to us through circumstances because we're no longer responding to Him in the supernatural. Jesus said in John 14, 27, He said, My sheep hear my voice, and another they will not follow. Notice he didn't say, my lambs hear my voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. People say, oh, well, God doesn't speak to me. Would that indicate that maybe you need to grow up from a lamb into a sheep? Because he speaks to his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. Word. That's good. Point to ponder. Hmm. Thought for the day. Okay. Are you really a sheep? What is a lamb? It's a baby sheep. And what do lambs do? They run off. And they go and get themselves in trouble. But a sheep that knows the shepherd's voice, wherever he goes, they follow. In Israel, even today, when they have sheep that have a shepherd leading them, they'll find a watering hole and all three flocks will descend upon the watering hole simultaneously. And one would say, oh my gosh, how are you ever going to separate the sheep? They must be branded. It's going to take forever to separate them and get the right ones back. One shepherd might steal the other one's sheep. Not possible. Why? 
Because those sheep know their shepherd's voice. And when one shepherd that is leading a flock leaves, here's what happens. He simply makes the commands and all the sheep that are of his flock separate. Mm -hmm. And they follow him out. And they'll go three different directions. Because my sheep hear my voice and another shepherd they will not follow. Here's why the sheep are out on the pasture and they're completely reliant upon the shepherd. Because it is so easy for a sheep to get himself in trouble with a wolf. Mm -hmm. It is so easy for a sheep who can't really defend himself because ah, ah, it's not fast. When they go into water, they have to be very careful that they go beside still waters because their fur, their wool, will actually gather up the water very quickly and they'll topple over because they've got these little bitty feet, almost like standing on high heels. And they'll fall over and they'll sink and they'll drown very quickly. Sheep literally need the shepherd so much that when a sheep falls down sometimes, he doesn't even have the ability to get back up. It's called a sheep that's been cast. And he, he falls down, he's cast. He can't get up. And the shepherd will hear and he'll go and he'll get the sheep up and he'll put them, massage the legs. My sheep hear my voice. And what happens is when a, a sheep or a lamb keeps running off, what will happen is the shepherd will leave the 99 sheep to go after the one. And he'll go rescue the sheep that's run off or the lamb, the young sheep or the maturing sheep that hasn't quite learned the significance of connecting with the shepherd for safety, protection, mm -hmm. provision, mm -hmm. guidance, yeah. direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens. The shepherd will go out with his rod to use it against the enemy, mm -hmm. a wolf mm -hmm. or a lion mm -hmm. or a bear. Mm -hmm. And his staff has got the shepherd's crook on it, that he'll grab that staff and he'll pull the sheep's upper leg to pull him out of a ditch or off or a little rocky crevice mm -hmm. and he'll reach over and he'll pull the sheep up and he'll carry the sheep and he'll comfort the sheep mm -hmm. who's distressed at this time because they've just had a traumatic experience mm -hmm. and what happens is if a sheep continues to run <clears throat> off mm -hmm. too long yeah. the shepherd in his mercy to protect the sheep from getting devoured or drowned or to die in a perilous way, he'll literally take his shepherd's staff out or the rod and he'll take one of the sheep's legs. And as much as it hurts him, but to protect him, he has to operate in tough love and he'll snap the leg. And now the sheep can't run off because it's got a bad leg. So the shepherd literally carries the sheep on his shoulders. And so it's not fun for the shepherd because he knows he's going to have to carry on his back the very sheep that he snapped the leg of while he's healing. But during that time, they bond. And the sheep now understands the shepherd's voice. And when the shepherd speaks, he knows it's for his protection. Mm -hmm. And the sheep follows him wherever he goes. So now when he's at the watering hole, and the shepherd says, okay, time to go. Baruch Hashem. And the shepherd goes and he has his voice, the sheep that are at the watering hole. So oh, time to go. I know my shepherd's voice, and another I will not follow. Yeah. Well, you can just come with me. We're fine. You can be part of my flock. Oh, no. Uh -uh. You don't love me like he does. You don't love me like he does. Well, how do you know? Give me a chance. I don't need you to give me a chance. No. He saved my life. He pulled me out of the rock. He saved me from the wolf. He hit him with the rod. He, he, he pulled me out of the waters when I tripped and I, I, I sunk. He carried me on his shoulders when I repeatedly ran off and missed the mark. Because yes. he loves me. Yes. Yes. My sheep hear my voice, mm -hmm. and another 
they will not fall. Tonight we're talking about one of the ways in which God bonds with us, one of the ways He communicates with us, and we're talking about the different ways that God speaks to us in dreams and visions. We're just going to scroll over some things, and then we're going to go over some symbols that God speaks to us, the definitions of certain things that we might see in a dream that will help us interpret a dream. Remember this, there's three components to a prophetic word. Three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. The first component is revelation. Mm -hmm. It could come in a dream, it could come by reading the word, it could come in a vision, it could come bubbling forth, it could come by the still small voice, it could come by the audible voice, it could come by a messenger angel that might come and speak to you. Mm -hmm. There's a variety of ways mm -hmm. in which God speaks. We have a book out called Hearing God. 25 different ways. It's on our website. You can download it for free. Mm -hmm. So this is, we're doing a topical message here on a completely other subject. That's a resource material you can grab for free at eagleheartfellowship.org under, under the library link. Hearing God, 25 different biblical ways. And it identifies them. But when God speaks to us in dreams and visions, there's three components to a prophetic word. One, revelation. Is it God? Is it our flesh? Is it the devil? Is it too much pizza and anchovies on our stomach before we went to bed along with the ice cream and the soda pop? Is it a soulless dream that's just out of stress, it's our mind playing and replaying things? If it's God, we move on to the second component, which is interpretation. We interpret what does this mean. And once God shows us what it means, then there's a third component called application. How do we apply this? So, three components, revelation, mm -hmm. interpretation. interpretation, and application. application. Good. Good. If we run off with a prophetic word that might be from God and accurate, mm -hmm. oh. but we don't have interpretation and proper application, we will have an incomplete mm -hmm. prophetic word. Mm -hmm. Or... If we try to add an interpretation that's not from the Lord, or an application, now we have a polluted prophetic word that's a mixture of us and the word mixed with him. You know, you can have a nice healthy steak, and you can mix some hamburger helper with it. And it's, it but it dilutes it, doesn't it? <coughs> okay? Sometimes we add some hamburger helper to the true meat of God's revelation. Mm -hmm. And we dilute it. But it's still palatable. But when we take a nice juicy ribeye and we mix a little bit of syringe full of strychnine in it, which is poison, even though the steak is real, the strychnine is also real. Yeah. And as you eat the steak, the strychnine within the steak can cause you harm. Yeah. So we don't want to add strychnine to the truth of the revelation that God gives. Mm -hmm. So let's not add to or take away from what God gives. Amen. Let's give the pure word of the Lord Amen. prophetically to people. And that comes by proper revelation. Is it God? Mm -hmm. If so, what's this mean? Let's interpret it mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit and the word of God. And then three, Lord, give us wisdom on how to apply. Amen. So revelation, interpretation... And application. These are three components of any prophetic word. I'll give you an example. I could use the term, Jason, go ahead and stand up if you would. Come on over here. I could say this. I could say, Jason, how are you doing today? Right? Okay, so now let me give you the same words but a different tone. Jason, how are you doing today? On transcript, it's the same. But voice inflection... Tone? Then let's add some body language. Jason, how are you doing today? My hands are up in the air. He's, so that's a lot different from Jason, how are you doing today? Right. So there's a way that I could ask the question inquisitively, inquiring. There's a way I could ask the question accusatorily. Accusing. Thank you. So when God speaks to you, it's not just the words. It's... What is the voice tone when this happens? Mm -hmm. Simon, Simon. Whoa. <coughs> verily, verily. Yeah. 
Do you see throughout the scriptures different ways where Jesus spoke to people? Mm -hmm. You know, in communications, only 7% of communications is words. That's right. 38% is volume of voice, tone. Mm -hmm. You can have a forceful voice, a loving voice, a seductive voice. Mm -hmm. Voice is 38% voice, tone, this and that. And then hand gestures and facial expressions are 58% statistically of communication. So when God speaks, it's not just the word he speaks, it's what else he's saying in the midst of it. And so you can come to somebody when God's not angry with somebody. And you can give them an accurate word, you can add your anger with it, and misrepresent God. How would you feel if you asked somebody to go give them, give somebody the key to a car? Say, hey, when you go give them the key to the car, um, tell them, I, I need it back, you know, at this amount of time. Mm -hmm. But instead, you show up and you tell them, so-and-so told me to give you the key to the car, they need it back by this time. So one is like an edict and a command and condemning and controlling. The other is they need it back by a certain time because they've got to go do something. Mm -hmm. So now when you get that key to go put it in that vehicle, you're like, oh my gosh, you know. I've, and they miscommunicated what you said. Now they come to give back the key to the car and, well, I got it back by a certain time. Oh, thank you so much. And you're looking at them like, why are they acting this way? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people wonder... I think God probably sits back and goes, oh, I know why they're acting that way. I had an imperfect vessel deliver a prophetic word from me that got that person all controlled and bound up instead of liberating them. Was that helpful? Okay, so one, one of the ways that God speaks is dreams and visions. One of the many ways. And by the way, hearing God 25 different biblical ways... There's only 25 in that book. There's got to be more. Mm. And so, God is so unlimited in the way he speaks. But one of the things that he does, he speaks to us in dreams to warn us. Amen. So he gives us a warning in a dream. How many have experienced God warning Amen. you in a dream? Amen. How many of you have taken heed to that warning yes. and it was well with you? Yes. And other people said, well, you know, why don't you want to go out with us tonight? Why don't you, you know, we've, we've gone out several times before. It's not for me tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, I feel like I'm not supposed to. Mm -hmm. and, and it may be okay for them, but it's not for you. Not and other times you. you might say, I had a dream and we really shouldn't go there tonight. Mm -hmm. And they decide to go anyway and you can stay back praying for them. And there's an incident that because you prayed and interceded, it was mitigated or lessened. Mm -hmm. But it could have been catastrophic. It could have been fatal. It could have been horrible. Mm -hmm. How many of us have also had an experience where somebody either came to us with a warning dream and they did it in a right spirit, but we were in a state of, I did it my way. <laughs> and what happened was we didn't heed the warning. And instead of obeying, we ended up suffering the consequences of that. You know, Job chapter 1, I mean, for Proverbs chapter 1 talks about the person who doesn't heed correction, that when God shows up in the situation, he will laugh at their calamity. He will literally laugh at their calamity. And it's, it's amazing to me that the God of the Bible would laugh at our calamity when he's such a loving God. Here's why he would laugh. The same way when you have a child who continues to rebel, continues to rebel, when they get their comeuppance, you're like, they finally got theirs. Now you're there to rescue them eventually, but when they repent. And a lot of times you're like, okay, well they got themselves into it, but I got them out of it three or four times already, and they didn't learn their lesson. So I'm going to have to let them sit there for a while. Mm -hmm. And so they call you on the phone, I had this and that happen, I need your help again. You're like, <laughs> like what do you mean? <laughs> well, how did you get yourself into this mess? Well, you know, it was so-and-so's fault. Really, what were you doing with so-and-so? 
How many times did I share with you to stay clear of them? If your right hand offend you, cut it off. And that's your right hand man that continues to offend you by getting you caught up in these circumstances. And you're like, okay, well, let me get back with you. And you sit back, and you're not happy they're in trouble, but you're happy that there's a reckoning day so that they can repent. Mm -hmm. And then get back on track with God, because they've kept you up awake on many a night, interceding in prayer Pray for them. Oh my God. And they've not really taken into consideration the fact that the only reason that they're alive is because two things. One, a merciful God in heaven, and, and two, somebody who loves them on the earth, Amen. praying intervention that it might be done in earth yeah. as it is in yeah. heaven and they got that revelation sometimes about what was going on with you in dreams or visions of the night when mm -hmm. deep sleep falls on men as you slumbered in your bed God spoke in your ears and gave you a warning dream for somebody else yeah. that you might intercede and ask God to send his angels yes. to wrap around them in the car accident, yes. in the drug overdose, yes. in driving drunk home, in getting tangled up with the wrong people, and an unwanted pregnancy, or some things that happen that shouldn't happen. There's just so many things, a drug trafficking incident where somebody could have got arrested, but they didn't as God gave them space to repent. And if they don't repent, every transaction begins to stack, because sin doesn't just go away unrepentant. Yes. Judgment may be delayed, but judgment will come because God cannot wink at sin. And when sentence is not executed speedily against a matter, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that it is fully set in the hearts of the sons of men to do wickedness. So maybe it's time that we don't pray that we don't get, our children don't get busted stealing the cookie from the cookie jar when they're three but that they get busted every time the crime doesn't pay. Yeah. And then we don't have to bail them out of 20-year sentences for stolen jets and yeah. multi-kilogram quantities of cocaine like happened with me and my mother who prayed God's mercy and space to repent on me. Yeah. But what happened was finally one day God had had enough. I had a warning dream in 1989 of being arrested with a stolen jet, a bag of cash, a Mercedes-Benz, a brown and white, gray and kind of tan and white jet, in Boca Raton Airport, and I did not heed the warning. And I went down there and got myself jammed up and arrested. And they came out of planes, trains, and automobiles, screwed Uzis into my ear, ruined my orange juice morning. I didn't pass go. I didn't collect $200. I went to jail. I went directly to jail. And for the next 19 years, six months, a week, and a day, as many of you know, I spent in federal prison. And it was heartbreaking for my mother and father. But you know what? The Lord had spoken to my mother the night before. And he had spoken to her on many occasions where she had received a warning dream and she would call me and meet with me and tell me who I was about to meet with, what automobile wow. they drove, out-of-state place that they had on, like a 911 bathtub Porsche with California plates. And then she would describe the person who was driving it and a specific medallion that he would be wearing and the color of his hair. And I would see that person at a stoplight who would raise, this is the day, day of pagers, you know, back in the day. He would raise his pager, like, you know, call me, you know, ping me. And I'd be like, okay, great, you know, like, you know, and I'd, I'd run the other direction. But see, I didn't run to the Lord the other direction. Mm. I run the other direction and got another connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So you can actually use prophetic revelation to avoid the police, but God will then suddenly lift the hedge after you have space to repent and don't. My goodness. And then guess what happens? All the other stuff that you did, sins stacked up, and the sins or the iniquities of the Amorites becomes full measure, and then he pours out his judgment mm -hmm. on it because he had Jesus die for the sin. But if you won't accept the sacrifice that Jesus made, you'll have to bear it up. And you don't go to heaven because you bore up your own sin. You miss heaven. You know, there's another place called not heaven. Yeah, party canceled due to fire there. So, yeah, yeah. And Domino's Pizza, they don't deliver. It's like Papa Murphy's, you've got to come pick it up. Oh, you stuck like Chuck, huh? So one of the things God does is he does dreams and visions, he does this to warn us. And 
when he warns us in a dream, he either warns us for ourselves or warns us for someone else. And we're back to the prophetic word, which when we get that dream, what would my mother do with the dream when she saw somebody who, by the way, um, about three months later was arrested with 99 pounds of cocaine what? in Kansas City, made half-page articles, and he told on everybody. everybody. He didn't go... He thought he was going not to the grand old jury, but he thought he was going to the grand old Opry and singing tenor. <laughs> they had to hit him with a brick to shut him up in the interrogation rooms because he was talking so much while they changed tapes. What? And he testified against everybody he knew, but he couldn't testify against me because you I hadn't mean. made that connection mm -hmm. that day. Wow. Praise wow. God. Oh, praise wow. God. But... Jesus. It did me no good. He was still in the game. Because I filled his shoes when he went away. My wow. goodness. Woo. So there must be repentance followed by the prophetic word, or it just delays the inevitable because God is so hungry and so desirous, and his love is so vast and so hot red for yes. you and your children that he chases them with loving kindness and then he begins to put up thorn bushes and hedges and then he puts up stop signs and he says bridge out and if they still go over the cliff he sends his angels to My pick God. them up My in their God. hands lest they dash their foot against a stone in response to your powerful prayers on Absolutely. your knees as you're interceding in behalf of Absolutely. those that Jesus died for yes. and God. gave his life for oh and love chases after them. Yes. Goodness and mercy yes. shall follow me all the days of my life. I believe goodness and mercy could be angels yes. named goodness Absolutely. and mercy. Absolutely. You know, one day we will judge angels, the scripture says. Yeah. You know, when you see the Olympics and there's diving competitions, you see the person do the dive. And then the judges pull up. Eight and a half, nine. Mm -hmm. Nine. Mm -hmm. Eight and a half, nine. Mm -hmm. They total the points, they judge. The next person goes up. I believe in heaven that since the scripture says we will judge angels, oh, yeah. I believe we'll see when we were in a car accident and an angel wrapped around us Jesus. and protected us. And the whole car was eaten up and crunched up. And we get out. When we get out, and we're like, oh. I'm like nine foot tall and bulletproof. I think I'll go have another drink. Nothing can kill me. It wasn't our ability. It was God's angel that wrapped around us. And we'll be like seeing it on the big screen. And the angels will be waiting for us to judge how they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll be like, oh, I don't know how you pulled that one off. Oh, that's how I got that little scrape. Nine and a half. <laughs> I don't think there will be any failed dives with the angels. Amen? So God gives dreams to warn us. He also gives dreams to direct us. Yes. God provided, God warned, uh, if you see Matthew 2, 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not go and return to Herod, right. Mary and Joseph took the baby Jesus and departed into their own country another way. So God warned Jesus' mother and his earthly father through dreams. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it's good enough for Joseph and Mary, it's good enough, it's good enough for me. Yeah. Over 30% of the Bible is compiled from dreams and visions. Yeah. I really feel led to share this before we move on. This is about Harriet Tubman. In 1820, God brought a child into the world who would later be known as the Moses of her people. Mm -hmm. Her name was Harriet Tubman, also known as the conductor of the Underground Railroad. Harriet was born a slave on a Maryland plantation and later escaped to freedom on the Underground Railroad herself. God spoke to her in numerous dreams and visions, giving her specific instructions throughout her 92 years. You know, there's some things coming upon our nation. Yes, it is. Pause and reflect. You may not have a cell phone. <laughs> You may not, but God, you may, there's some things coming. Oh, 
that God is wanting to prepare you and your family and me for. The family of God so that we can rescue those that are not the family of God in these situations. Supernatural provision, supernatural wisdom. And if God can do it for Harriet Tubman during slavery, He can certainly do it for you and me in the 21st century. Maybe you're being prepared for such a time as is coming. Such a time as Wow. The handwriting is on the wall. On the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your seven course meals now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when the people that came over on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Marie, you know, it got so tight for them, God's people, as they came into a new land, that on one of the places, a lot of them died. You know, we see the pretty stories in the in the picture books in, in grade school, but that's not the whole story. No. Right. You know, you don't know the story behind the glory. My God. Right. But they ate five kernels of corn a day. Mm -hmm. That's all they had to work yeah, right. with during some of the cold times because the harvest was over. They couldn't go out to quick trip. <laughs> they couldn't get a two for two dollar and twenty two cent hot dog experience. <laughs> Wasn't available. They didn't have 24 bottles of water that you could pick up for $3.99 on sale at Target. Right. And so, it was a very different situation. Long story short, they made it through very difficult times. Mm -hmm. You know, during the time when Elijah was around, um, I think if you remember, there was, there was a king, and it got so bad that people were eating their own children. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. You know, I, I pray that doesn't sure. come upon our nation. It was famine. It was bad. But there was a famine in the land. Have you there. seen the news in third world countries right now, what's taking place? What? Hello. Yeah. But there's hope because we hear from God. Mm -hmm. And He will supernaturally provide. He will cause an angel to bring us yes. food and water. Mm -hmm. We're about to have some supernatural provision. There are prophetic words that 50% of our water supplies are going to be poisoned. Yes. And there are prophetic words for some people to store up water. Other people are getting prophetic words from the Lord that they're not to store up five gallon jugs of water, but they're to store up one gallon jugs of water. Do you know why one gallon versus five gallon? You might say, well, they're easier to carry. Yeah, that would be true. But here's the reason that the Lord spoke to them. That in the end days when these things come, if you have a one gallon jug of water and faith, and you hand somebody a one-gallon jug of water for them and their household, mm -hmm. yeah. that if they'll simply pray over the water, what will happen is this. When they pray over the water and they pour it out, it won't run dry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it will teach them faith with an evangelistic effect to bring them into a personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it exciting that we're coming into times with Holy Ghost inside information and that we... Isn't it exciting that we're coming into times with Holy Ghost inside information and that we don't have to worry because our Father supplies all of our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus? You know, I thank God for Medicare and Medicaid. I thank God for programs that provide food and, and, and bridge funding. But you know what? I think that sometimes we have become too reliant upon somebody other than the Lord. Right. And we get angry politically when this hasn't happened and that hasn't happened. And these people must be idiots if they can't get it right. Have you ever thought that maybe the blessing is being withdrawn? Yeah. So that we can come to the one who's unseen for our provision, who provided for us so wonderfully through those programs in a prosperous nation. But now the props are being removed so that we can return to Him. Yeah. Yes. Have you looked at the doctrine in the church that's acceptable nowadays? Yeah. It is so far contrary to the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah. I'm shocked and astonished that preachers even preach it. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's astonishing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll just say this. Um, it was not Adam and Steve in the garden. No. You know, I love homosexual people. I have many friends that are homosexual. But it is not biblical for Adam and Steve to get married. It is the institution of marriage of one man and one woman. Now, what I've just said today, in a few years, I could probably be prosecuted for. Just keeping it real. I don't care what somebody 
establishes as the law. You can you know what? Here's a statistical fact. In two states, it's legal to smoke marijuana. Yeah. Hold on. Do you know it's legal for bestiality? Oh. In 23 states? Still. That's some crazy stuff. I don't know, Google it. I could be wrong. Check it out. We have some strange laws on the book. Just because it's legal doesn't make it right. That's right. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. And just because somebody says that you it's okay doesn't mean it is okay. Wow. There's some things that they made illegal that you should be able to do. Like pray in school. Imagine that. Wow. One person spearheaded getting prayer removed from school. Yes. Guess what? When people start shooting each other in the schools, they got to praying. They went to praying. While somebody was praying on them with a weapon. And instead of putting prayer back in school, they said, well, let's just go ahead and remove the guns from the nation. But isn't that what the Philistines did to the Israelites? Made them move their plowshares, their swords into plowshares and took away their weapons and then they put them in bondage? We're on some interesting subject tonight that I didn't plan to go to. <laughs> but I got news for you. Blessing Israel, I will bless you. And cursing Israel, I will curse you. Right. I don't care if the, the Jewish person is born again or not. Be a blessing to them. They're God's chosen Amen. people. They're the apple of his eye. He's inscribed them on the Amen. palms of their hands. Even as a mother can't forget her nursing child, neither can a heavenly father forgive them. You bless Israel, God will bless you. Amen. What? Yet, yet we have people that are cursing Israel, yes. wanting to wipe it off the map, yes. yep. claiming the Holocaust never happened. Yeah. 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 And instead of standing against that person or that doctrine, we fell silence with the sin of silence. Mm -hmm. There is a James 4.17, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. It's called the sin of omission, failing to do that which God called you to. Harriet Tubman stepped up to the plate. And she said, I'm going to go back and help those that are behind. I'm going to risk my life because the Lord Jesus Christ just spoke to me in a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. And with that dream, he helped turn a nation with equality. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a nation where you can elect a person of color to the presidency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree with the one that we have, <laughs> but I praise God that we have a person of color in the presidency. Mm -hmm. And we honor the presidential office mm -hmm. because God put him in office, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Wow. God put him in office He'll bring us back to Christ, not through his evangelistic work. But God will remove a yoke of wood and replace it with a yoke of iron. People said, well, how could he end up in a Christian nation? He himself prophesied it when he said it. There's going to be change. We're in a postmodern Christian nation. We're not in a Christian nation anymore. That's how he can get elected with the doctrines that he preaches. Wow. Wow. Wow, David, you just said that on video. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Harriet, <laughs> our black sister, who delivered people out of bondage yeah. with her gift, <laughs> delivered them out of bondage with her gift, Martin Luther King delivered people out of bondage with his gift. Yes. A tree is known by its... Okay, I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> okay. God instructed her on how to set other slaves free. God showed Harriet rivers, swamps, and passages through forests in advance by dreams. He also showed her how to lead slaves in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York safely to Cana, Canada during the pre-abolition days of slavery in the United States. Her life records numerous life-threatening trips that inspire faith. She led more than 300 black men, women, and children past the swamps, forests, rivers, and secret hiding places that marked the dangerous escape route to the north. Like Joseph in the Old Testament, who was used to help save his brothers and family, the Lord's dreams guided Harriet Tubman to return to the Maryland plantation and deliver her three brothers from slavery. This dear servant of God could neither read nor write. Right. Right. Wow. She, had, 
she could neither read. Don't tell me you've got to learn more Greek and Hebrew and go to cemetery, seminary. Don't tell me you have to do that to be qualified. You just have to get to know Jesus. The Holy Spirit is your personal Savior. He's your teacher. He's your parent. He's the one that comes alongside to help you. He reveals Jesus and he reveals his word. We have got too much education at times. Right. We have great orators in the pulpit that don't know Jesus. We have great theologians in seminary schools equipping people that don't know Jesus. How do I know this? Because I'm hearing the testimonies of those that have had their Ph.D. doctorate degrees and trained our youth for bachelor's degrees in theology and divinity, and all of a sudden they have an encounter with the living God. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know they weren't saved the whole time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then they have to go back and re-look at their doctrines and say, how did we get this stuff? It's not in the Bible. Where did we learn this stuff? It was handed down from other people. Anyway... This dear servant of God could neither read nor write, yet she was never caught, and she never lost a single passenger as conductor of the Underground Railroad. Like Joseph and Mary obeying the dreams God gave them to protect the baby Jesus, Harriet's life and ministry protecting and delivering others was also marked by God speaking, guiding, and directing her through dreams of the night. God shows no partiality. He's no respecter of persons. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you, for yeah. whatever you need in the moment. Yeah. He will give you guidance. Let's just stop right now for a second. I just sense we're supposed to ask the Lord to begin to speak to us yes. in dreams yes. and visions. The atmosphere Hallelujah. just changed. Would you, yes. Yes. Would you play? Yes. You know, we may not have a perfect uh, homiletical message tonight, but we're going to have an encounter with the Lord. Yes. Wouldn't you rather have that than another oh, nice little teaching with seven points at home? Yeah. Go online, get the teaching, it's free. Thank you, Jesus. Here he comes. God seeks a willing vessel with a fully committed heart through whom he can speak today. 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the Lord God. His eyes roam to and fro throughout the earth, seeking those whose hearts are fully committed unto them, unto him, that he might show himself strong and mighty in their behalf. Just raise your hands unto the Lord. Say, Lord, remove the scales from my eyes. Enable me to see what I cannot see. Enable me to see spiritually. Improve my physical vision. Visit me with your angels as you did of the saints of old because you're no respecter of persons. I don't want it for my entertainment. I want it for the enjoyment of you and your presence. I want to know you, Lord, and the power of your resurrection. Teach me how to write the vision down. How to write the dream down. And then give me understanding with interpretation. And application. With the anointing of the sons of Issachar. That I might know the times and the seasons. Of what I ought to do. With strategies from heaven. From my family. If I'm supposed to get some one gallon jugs of water. Show me. If I'm not, show me. If I'm supposed to gather some food, show me. If I'm not, show me. Because we know you call different people to different things. So we're not going to do a cookie cutter approach. We want relationship with you and a direct line from heaven. Ring me up, Lord. Ring me up. Call me on the phone. Call me on the phone.
R-A-I-N. Yeah. Something about the rain. Now, I'm not a musician, but God will sometimes speak, and very rarely will I ask her to play a specific song.
open and he said, come up higher, come up hither. God's calling us up. He's calling us up.
glimpses into the spirit of our elder sister who needs that love right now. Something's happening right there. Jesus' name. Kristen? 
Zenobia, yeah. there's one last song I just have added to my spirit. Yes. Jesus on the main line. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, you're kind of stuck in the glory, aren't you? You know the word the word glory is the Hebrew word kabod, kabod, and it means heaviness, weightiness of God when He's on you. Jesus is